Greetings beautiful people and welcome back to the coolest channel on YouTube. I'm really excited that you guys could be here with me for this one. I'm really excited to share this message with you guys and do this topic this week because it's very special. It's very near and dear to my heart and I know that it's changed my life dramatically. So after I would typically make a post about doing ayahuasca or plant medicine, I would get a ton of questions and a ton of people messaging me, asking me. And I feel like there's a lot of people out there right now seeking more. We know that there's more to reality than we're experiencing with our five senses. We know that there's more to life than just living a monotonous day-to-day -day mundane routine and then dying and being buried in the ground. Like what happens to us after we die? What is our consciousness? What is our spirit, our energy? all of these questions and they're all very very good questions and I highly encourage you guys to explore that for yourself and in this video and in the next video this is going to be a three-part series I plan on sharing my perspective on that based off of the experiences that I've had with ayahuasca so buckle up we're gonna have a good ride I'm gonna just share with you guys really quickly before we take any journey it's important to know where we started so I'm just gonna tell my story man not too long it's not gonna to be too drawn out but I'm gonna let you guys know how this whole thing started. I'm gonna share with you guys like the ceremony and my experience during the actual plant medicine ceremony that we did, and then also kind of how it made an impact on my life afterwards. The first ceremony I did was four years ago, and I've done five ceremonies total. So I feel like I'm educated enough on this topic to discuss my perspective, solely my perspective trying to put this into words is going to be a little bit of a challenge when we get into the video because where you go is hard to say with words and explain but I'm gonna do the best that I can so thank you guys for hanging out with me for this video get comfortable grab yourself a cup of coffee or something and let's get into this video man so before we take this journey I just kind of want to let you guys know a little bit about how I ended up getting to the ayahuasca ceremony and kind of where my life took some turns that led me to this journey because it has been absolutely crazy and I know a lot of you guys are going to be able to relate to this. So back in 2015 and years before that I was working in the oil field right after I got out of high school. I did everything that I was told, you know, I got a house, I had a successful safety contracting company, I bought a brand new truck, life was good, healthy, happy, everything was like amazing. But there was something deep down inside of me that was saying like, this isn't it. There's more out there. And it wasn't from a place of greed. It was just more of a place of like adventure. And just like, I never really fit into that box that society tries to put you in. And like, you know, you got to work this many hours and have this many kids and buy a house and then retire at this age like that. Just, I didn't subscribe to that theory and neither did my friends. And it was beautiful because we were all of like mind. We we're all dreamers and believers one friend specifically and his name is Dan and he will always live on with me as a part of me and I love him so much and he was my best friend and we lived together I had just bought in a house I was 25 years old just bought in a house and he was living with me and we would always hang out we did everything together our girlfriends were friends we traveled together we did everything together and um, this part is a little bit more challenging for me to communicate so I'm going to do it to the best of my ability but we're not promised anything man and we're, nothing is guaranteed and I'm just gonna tell you exactly how it is so one weekend um, Dan went to BC with his parents and was driving in his car and got into a car accident and never came home and it was at that time the most and still to this day the most devastating thing that I've ever been through in my life not only myself included obviously everybody else that knew Dan it was absolutely devastating and it left me with a massive void and hole in my heart and I didn't know what or why or anything. I'm like, how could somebody so beautiful and so amazing be taken from us like that? You know what? We're not promised anything in this life, man, and we're not guaranteed. You can be the best person in the world and walk down the street tomorrow and get tagged by a car and not be here with us anymore. So it's like, why are we living in this, like doing things that don't just like make us, you know, jump out of bed in the morning and go crazy and be excited about life? And Dan and I would always talk about this and this is a, one of the things that I appreciated the most about our relationship was that he was a dreamer just like me. And we would always talk about moving to Mexico and like chartering a little fishing boat or something and just like living man and doing what we loved. I started multiple different brands when I was like before this branding stuff was even cool. Multiple different brands. One was called Master Shredders, a clothing company. It was all going to be about fitness and like becoming all you can be and just like investing in yourself today for a better tomorrow, which the message still continues to this day. 
and we would always talk about it, man, and just doing big things, and like we took action. When I got the news of Dan passing away, I was in Fox Creek, Alberta, in a shitty little hotel room working up north, and his mom phoned me, and you know, like the conversation went and obviously shook me up and devastated me to the core. And I remember calling my friends, and we all just were heartbroken, devastated, and this is where everything changed for me and this is where the story takes a really really crazy turn now take this for what it is and believe it if you want to believe it I was laying in my bed the night that I got the news it was about three or four hours later after I had gotten the news and I was laying in my bed and I was like sleeping but I wasn't quite sleeping I was sleeping but I wasn't quite sleeping and then like unconscious and then all of the sudden like I was wide awake sitting on my floor and I could like completely coherent and I could look around and I could see my body in the bed sleeping and I could see the kid Will Osmond I could see not a kid I could see the guy that I was sharing a hotel room with sleeping over in the other bed and I was completely aware and Dan was sitting right in front of me and we were both sitting in front of each other with our legs crossed, which I never sit like that. And then he's like, I still to this day remember it so, so clearly. He was looking at me and he had his hair slicked back and he's wearing this striped hoodie and we were looking at each other. And in that state that I was in, I had, there was no emotion. It wasn't like I was sad or anything like that. I just remember looking at him and I was like, how could you leave me like this? And he's like, it wasn't planned, it just happened. And I'm like, are you going to keep coming and visiting me? And he's like, I'll always be here with you. And he st as we were talking, he took my hand and he was putting these beads onto my wrist. And these beads between him and I were very sentimental because he would always take them when I was gone at work and he would wear them and I would see him on Instagram like wearing my beads and stuff. And I'd be like, what are you doing wearing my shit when I'm gone at work? So we would always like, it was just something. So he was put these beads onto my wrist. And in that moment, I was getting this sense of urgency, like he wasn't here for long, he just stopped by, and I woke up literally in my bed, and I was like, <gasps> and sprang up out of my bed, and started, lost all emotional control, and started crying my eyes out, and bawling, bawling uncontrollably. And my friend Will came into the bedroom, and he's like, what's going on? And I'm like, I was like, oh, I was like, I, was like, I don't know what just happened, and I was like, blah, blah, blah. and he's like, what, 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 and I'm like, I was sleeping, but I wasn't quite sleeping, and I start to explain, and Will's like, stop. And he's like, last night, I was sleeping, and he's like, and somebody walked by the end of my bed, and he's like, sorry, I'm not here to bother you, I'm just here to give this to Jared. And he held this thing out, and my buddy Will thought that it was a watch, and it was the beads that he was going to put on my wrist, I think. But he walked by Will's bed, and he's like, sorry, I'm not here to bother you. I'm here to give this to Jared. And then he walked into the room that I was staying in, like the section of the room I was staying in, and then we had this experience. Now for not only me to have this experience, but for him to verify the experience and for him to see the same thing is beyond, now it's not just me spaced out. It's not just a quick, like it happened and it changed everything. And I woke up and I was completely beside myself. I couldn't like make sense of anything, was to, like devastated. And I went into the work, I said, you know, here's my radio, I can't work, and I'm the, I was the safety consultant on site, so if I wasn't working, nobody was, and I told them, like, listen, man, the, most, the worst thing that could ever happen to somebody in their life just happened to me, I can't stay here, man. I was like, I gotta go, I'm sorry. And I gave them my radio, and I left, and I went home, and I, did, I would drive down the highway for five minutes, and I would uncontrollably lose, <clears throat> lose my shit, couldn't, I barely could even make it home. I'm like... It was just, man, for like weeks after that, it was just devastating, like still to this day, devastating. So I get home, lose it, start partying, start just like, you know, like numbing the pain, tr planning with everybody and just like collecting everything. And we all came together, about 15 of us and just like lost it, man. Like we were drinking a lot, we were partying a lot, we were doing a lot of dumb shit and that went on for a while and we kind of helped um, Dan's mom, Janet and Nikki and Jake and Nathan, like everybody planned the funeral. We did what we could, put together some slideshows and had an amazing celebration of life. And I was sitting there like wondering, I'm like, man, like there, we're not promised anything. This is, we're not guaranteed anything. This is like, how could somebody so beautiful be taken away from us like that? Like it's not fair. And it kind of just put things into perspective for me that we're not promised anything, man, nothing. And 
if we don't go after and we don't live a life of excitement, it is up to us to do everything that we want to do in this lifetime. And literally, you can be the most incredible human being and be walking down the road and get tagged by a car tomorrow and it's all over, man. And that right there scared me. Like, it really set things into perspective. And then I started thinking after my alcohol-induced hypnosis, I started thinking to myself, like, what the fuck happened in that hotel room? What happened? And it really, I really started doing this discovery and switching my perspective on it. And Dan left me with the greatest gift. He literally showed me on his way out to, which I'll tell you where I think he went after, but um, he left me with the greatest gift that I could have possibly ever asked for. My best friend gave me the greatest gift that I've ever had in my entire life. And he showed me that this isn't it, man. What we're experiencing in this reality right here, right now is not it. And there's a lot more happening that we just can't even, I don't, I don't even think we can comprehend it with our brains. He gave me a gift and showed me that life goes on and that he's always going to be here with me. And he's anybody that you've maybe lost in this journey of life as well is always here with you. It's just that maybe they're not visible with our five senses. Maybe we can't see them. But once in a while, once in a while, you'll get a sign where something unexplainable will happen or something fucked will happen. Maybe like, you know, you're thinking about them and then like, you know, some weird coincidence will happen. And you'll see like, you know, they're still here. I know they are. And they live through us. The people that we've lost live through us. And oh man, the more that we can be in tune with our true nature of who we are and not with what reality is telling us and the news is telling us and the bills that we got to pay and the jobs that we got to make sure we have, like when we can just fucking let that go for a second, we can tune into our true self, which is why meditation is so important. So, oh man. Lots more happening than we're aware of. So after that happened, I went and I said, you know what, if I was ever going to do anything with my life and I was ever going to make a move, now is the time. I can't wait any longer because like I said, tomorrow is not promised. I'm like, let's just go for it, man. Like I'm ready and I believe in what I'm doing and I know that if anybody can do it, I can do it and I will make it happen no matter what. And I literally got rid of all of my stuff. I sold, I got rented out my house got rid of my truck, got rid of my business, got rid of everything and I left, got my house, I took all of the shit out of my house, gave it all to my dad, put it all in his house and like literally just like packed up my shit and I was gone within two weeks. I applied for a job selling timeshare here in Cabo and I didn't even have the job and I left, came down here with like $1,500 in my pocket and then literally ended up partying for like a week, spent all my money, had nothing, literally, it, it was crazy. Story for another day. But um, I, I took the chance and I said, you know what, I'm going to do this for me, I'm going to do this for him, and I'm going to create a life of excitement, man. But before I left, this is what's crazy. This is where we start to talk about the craziness. So before I left, I have a very good friend of mine named Andre Como. Shout out to my boy Andre. Love. So he's like, Jared, I told him what happened in that hotel room, and I was like, man, like Andre, this is what happened, you know, like it was insane and some of my friends were looking at me because like I said, we were partying a lot after, after it happened. They were like, you know, Jared, you're just whatever, talking shit out, like you're drunk or whatever, you know, nobody believed, but I didn't care if anybody believed me, I know what happened. So Andre did believe me and he's like, listen man, you can do this thing called ayahuasca. He's like, I've done it in Peru and I had an amazing time and he shared his experience with me and he's like, you can do ayahuasca and you can see Dan again and you can talk to him and you can get this clarity because I needed clarity. I want to know what happened. And he's like, you can get this clarity and you know, you can have, you can ha like talk to him again. So I'm like, okay. Sweet, good to know. I don't got the money to just be flying to Peru right now, but like to put a plant the seed, thank you very much. And then I ended up getting to Mexico and oh man, the stars aligned. I ended up meeting this girl that I was working with, not romantically or anything, but just a friend. And she's like, yo, um, I kind of like shared a little bit of the story. Definitely didn't go into the depth that we're going into right now. Just kind of like talking about ayahuasca and stuff like that. And she's like, yo, I know these two shamans that live in mainland Mexico and they come down here. These guys are generational shamans that like literally conduct ceremonies down here. And she's like, it is a magical experience. She's like, they're really, really amazing. She's like, I can hook you guys up if you want. 
And I was like, yeah, that sounds great. I got some things that I need to get figured out here. And so she hooked me up with them. And honestly, what I'm about to share with you next is the craziest, most incredible story that I am ever going to share that's incredible, most incredible story that's ever happened in my life. And I've told this story to many, many people and it's gonna be, it's a wild one. Now, in the next video, I'm gonna share this with you and in hopes that I can encourage you guys to ask the deeper questions. For all you guys that are seekers, man, for all of you guys that are looking for more, that know there's more out there, I just ask you, stay on point, stay true, ask the questions and the truth will come. If you ask yourself the questions, you trigger your reticular activating system, your mind will start to look for the answers. So I'm about to share a story with you right now that happened to me in my life that was absolutely incredible. And that's gonna be in the next video. So stay tuned, I'll see you guys on the next one. If you haven't, and oh, before we go, I just wanna say thank you guys for listening to me, man. I'm really kinda of just like opening up to you guys and sharing this with the internet and with the only hopes of just maybe answering a question or maybe encouraging somebody else to look a little bit deeper than what they're experiencing in this reality. So thank you guys for watching the video number two. The next one is gonna be absolutely crazy. Like the video for your boy, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you can be notified when video number two comes out, man. It's going to be worth it, and it'll be dropping in a couple of days, man. I'll see you guys on the next one.